So the cloud, what does that mean? If you look at it over time, you know, it started out with this VM scheduling, but as we've moved into the future and today, the cloud is made up of multiple elements. It's, you've got bare metal, you've got containers, you've got VMs, you've got public and private cloud. How does something like Open Contrail fit and make those pieces work together? So let's, let's talk about bare metal to start with, right? Because yeah. all legacy data centers started there before virtualization becomes such an easy technology to use. We wanted to have all our applications migrated to the virtualized cloud. It's just a concept that I'm just talking for a minute, right? Having all the workloads virtualized, but you cannot do that in, in a week or in a month or something like that. It's a very long-term process. You need to do a lot of testing. You need to be sure that your application performs on the same level in your bare metal environment as well as in your virtualized environment. There are some changes there. You know that you have certain performance you are willing to lose because you have the, the agility to actually scale your application really, really quickly, really dynamically. But you still have that application talking to the legacy systems in bare metal. Open control gives you the opportunity to connect those systems very smoothly, very seamlessly. You have to have gateway to connect the overlay network with the underlay network, but it's very natural. And actually using BGP protocols, they connect it to the, together naturally. So when we're doing the migration to bare metal to workloads, we find that having that technology very dynamically, enforcing the rules to do that, makes the life of the system admins in the data center way easier. What do you think? Sure, I think if, if you look at the, every requirement of every enterprise customer or telco customer, what, what we've seen, it's like everyone wants to connect the Hyper-V, the VMware, the KVM, the bare metal, the containers, and they want to create the multi-cloud. And if you look at the market, there is no solution which can offer tightly connect all these things together. And the most critical point on this connection is usually networking. It's not the provisioning because provisioning of virtual machine on different platform is easier, but how to connect single pane for the networking. And this is what uh, you can provide by the open contrail. If you look at bare metal or traditional networking automation, it's all based around expect strips and, and some weird interfaces to actually change configuration. One of the pieces of value we saw was a single pane of glass to provision networking across compute vehicle, whether it be bare metal, uh, VM or containers. And one of the powers, a story that I can share is at Vancouver last year, uh, we were looking at Kubernetes and we went up and actually spoke to Juniper Open Contrail team and they said, absolutely, we'd love to work with you on this. And once we got back to the office, we started working on the integration with Kubernetes and in a couple of weeks, we actually had something that we could demo. And I was able to demo at the Kubernetes launch a plug-in to actually solve container networking for Open Contrail. So I think that's the power of the community and taking our voices to the stage and actually having it heard and, and shaping the future of the product. I remember uh, when you came to me in Vancouver and told me that you will do the Kubernetes and I look at you that you are crazy. It's, yeah, you it's just almost, laughed at me and yeah, said, yeah, you know, yeah. this, is, this is never going to yeah, become yeah, a thing. And I said, you know. Impossible. And after one year, we have IoT platform based on based solution. On. What's so what is telling you all this, right? You have a technology that is flexible enough to adopt to new technologies, right? Containers, how old is it? No, no more than four years. No. Even yeah, orchestration probably yeah. even mainstream a year, maybe. Incredible, yeah. incredible. The day of tomorrow is going to be something else. We don't even know. And having the technology that already showed that it went through three different phases of technology, be flexible enough, obviously you need to keep enhancing it and working. And this is why we have an open source community because patches, enhancements came from everywhere and it's adopting. You had demos, you have testing, you have orchestration, patches, etc. It's a very full integrated solution. One of the things we were trying to leverage as well is if you have a private cloud, but you have uh, workloads that you need some global reach, you can actually leverage the public cloud. But what we wanted to create was that consistent experience again with the networking. So if we got a call and, hey, we need some, some workload spun up in China, we'd be able to lay out the infrastructure in such a way on the public cloud to get that reach. We weren't going to go and build a data center overnight in China to actually service that customer. But to be able to leverage the best of both worlds, so we knew we needed in-house resources on the private cloud, 
but going out to something like an AWS to get your global reach, we're all global companies here, you get a phone call saying, hey, we need extra workloads in this region, being able to leverage that. So we went and, and built a story around laying open contrail out on these public clouds as well to be able to provide a consistent experience networking wise. And that was something that was absolutely possible. And we worked with the open contrail team to actually get that implemented. And there's plenty of documentation around putting open contrail on the public clouds and, and integrating it. Again, with open protocols, BGP, we can actually have these workloads interface with the public clouds, which I think is an incredible story. Yeah, definitely. And this actually inspired us in the community. And we took this approach and leveraged it for one of our big customers who actually needs exactly the same solution running the application in the target uh, geographic location near today customers. So we are now prototyping first application on Kubernetes for Open Contrail to federate it between the private OpenStack and their AWS and their X-Space Cloud. So federation between all these locality and, and it, it works. Having a platform there that can actually do that, I can't overstate it, but you look at it, not everything can do this as, or it has a framework that's flexible enough. So as we're saying this kind of jokingly, how easy it is, it's actually quite an incredible feat that we can actually take this and, and use it in multiple places. Yeah, you unleash the number of opportunities that you are providing to your own teams, right? You nail it very, very well. So we have a new customer in a new country where we don't have a data center. There's probably some legal legislation that actually is telling us that we need to have the data of that customer in that country. The public cloud is giving us that opportunity, but we need the technology that we already tested it, enhanced, we understand internally to move into the public cloud seamlessly. And that's, that's a fact. I mean, a lot of people is testing it, a lot of people is moving to production with that kind of technology. So it's, it's, it's seriously working. And even in our experience, going to the security guys and just saying, if you're rolling out the same networking, tick, it's not a conversation you need to have. I'm, I'm providing the same infrastructure on the public cloud. So they're happy campers because they've already signed off on this infrastructure internally, so they're not worried about solving the same problems. And it's a, fly, a flat text file for them, right? Right. It could be a JSON file, a YAML file, whatever kind of file. But for them, it's not like these complex policies or these complex, like, protocols and all those granular things. It's a JMO file or JS file that you just describe to them, approve it, go there, everybody's happy. Yeah, I think some power in, in the ability in, to actually manage an SDN is when you actually have your, your end user not even know that they're provisioning networks. So when you go and look at how they've implemented plugins in, in Kubernetes, that interface is transparent to the user, right? They don't know that they're actually provisioning secure multi-tenant networks. And I think that's a great experience and a great story. For the guys that are actually running the SDN, it's great to know the nuts and bolts. But for your end users that you've actually given self-service infrastructure to, go deploy your own apps. We're in you know, the DevOps revolution where people write and deploy their apps themselves. The ability for them to transparently provision networking resources, I think is incredibly valuable. So seeing that story come to pass and people not knowing that Open Contrail is doing the heavy lifting under the covers, I think is speaks volumes into how easy it is to actually provision those resources.